So anyway, it is uh, June 8th, 2022. This is the Southwick Agricultural Commission, regular monthly meeting. Um, we have myself, Bert Hansen, Ron Cicchini, uh, Marisa Coco Bragan, and Sage Fury alternate. So with the four of us, I believe we have a quorum. So we can um, uh, get going. Cindy, have you seen anything in the any any mail, you know, postal mail or anything coming in for us? I have not, but I was not in today, so Jean may have something. Yeah, okay. Um, and I have the minutes of May eleventh. Um, you guys want to take a couple of minutes on the minutes? Um, maybe. Thank you. <laughs> Just a, <laughs> thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Um, notice under business on the first page in the mm -hmm. last sentence break I think it's like written as car breaks versus V R E A K I can try and know the spelling <laughs> uh, it may be possible to break the survey down into two parts for better oh. convenience Um, and that's on page three? Page one. Page First one. page, oh, yes. Okay. Under business. Yeah. In the last sentence, very last oh, sentence. Break. Break. Um, and in, in that same paragraph, a couple of lines up, um, questions from the public at the art show are basically what the intention of the master plan is um, and what is its intentions and goals, I would say. Right. Then on the second page, um, where it says commissioner appointments, Chairman Hansen discussed your appointments. Just a clarification on that second sentence of this bullet point. All current commissioners will need to apply for their position if they want to be reappointed. Is that referring to like everyone in this term now? Everyone who's on the commission has had to Every, reapply? Um, everybody whose term ah. is up. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Hi, Raquel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So maybe we should clarify that. Um, Let me reread it. All okay. current commissioners whose term whose is term is expiring, is expiring will need to apply for their position. Yeah, I think that would make more sense because mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if that meant that everybody on the commission right. had a term that was in, in uh, expiring. So. There's our agenda. <laughs> oh, and then Davis Road says Commissioner Sayak Bisailon has a meeting with representatives of MBAR to discuss what progress is being made to include properties that are currently under five acres. Did she actually have that meeting? I, I don't remember her mentioning that she was going to meet with MBAR. I know that she was starting to do some research yeah. on it, but I don't know that she and, ever had a meeting with MBAR. And maybe that got confused because she was also talking to the association of AgCom. That's who she was talking to. And she wasn't even at this meeting. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> well, that, okay. Um, that makes sense. Uh, okay. I think just take that whole sentence out. I mean, she had him right. Yeah, I think so. With, um, yeah, Davis. that's yeah. right. Yeah, I think that might be. Okay. We have a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'll make that. Right, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Second. Sage is seconding. I guess we got to do roll call. So Bert Hanson, aye. Right. Aye. Marisa. Aye. And Sage. Aye. Okay. Thank you. We got to sign them. Yeah. And here's the, the corrected version. Here's the here's the corrected version. So you can sign. That one. Um, well, you might not be because you weren't yet. Uh, uh, so just write, yeah, write yourself in. That's fine. We want my pen for that. Oh, here's yeah. your pen back. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Here, I have two pencils. So I can share oh, thank you. <laughs> no taking purposes. Thank you. Oh, it's so pointy. I, I, I. I don't want to dull it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> it's like ready to take a test, an SAT. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I thought we'd actually, one of the other commissions actually does new business before um, old business. So I'm going to switch to new business. Um, commission reappointments, we actually just kind of talked about because of the, of the protocol about reapplying. Um, we know that Dennis did not reapply. So that means that one of our alternates can and should uh, become a full commissioner. I was kind of hoping that Brett and Zach would be here. So we could talk about who wants to who wants to do it. Um, but I guess we'll have to talk about that next time. Okay. <laughs> and if, I would imagine the, the appointments will be made shortly after the first of July, mm -hmm. which is you know the fiscal year. So, um, did you sign this? Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. I'm hanging on that fence again. We'll see. <laughs> so, we'll just have to kind of wait and see on that. Uh, the AgCom magazine, remember last month we talked about the Tennessee Ag Insider? Oh, yeah, is there a way for Cindy to bring up a uh, to I, share that on Zoom? Can, or can you share that on okay. Zoom? Yeah. I actually need to log in. So, uh, Sage being Sage, uh, he already is moving along on that uh, project. Um, are you going to show the, the design? Yes. Uh, yes, I'll bring it. So it looks, this is the initial, Sage's initial go, the garden's oh, edge. Beautiful Sage, yeah. yeah. Looks really good. Uh, and we, and then he and I had a very brief conversation when he sent me this email. And you guys have a copy 
of the list of potential stories. I mean, this is a big project. Um, the Tennessee Ag Insider, when you get to the, the staff, is you know 50 people. <laughs> uh, I don't know if the four of us can handle it, <laughs> but we should at least look into it, you know, and see. I, I'm kind of envisioning. Uh, and tell me what you think too. A kind of a Southwoods type of piece. Yeah. And then a, a print version and an online version. You know, a, yeah. you know, we could do like a MailChimp or a constant contact, one of those types of online newsletters. Yeah. And I think it'd be a very cool thing to do. Um, the online version wouldn't cost anything. Right. The print version would. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to think about how, you know, how do we pay for it? Um, well, I wonder if there'd be grants and stuff to maybe apply for. I mean, you could always ask for it in the budget, especially um, yeah. Yeah, some sort of that. community. Communication, yeah. I think, is important. The town, other than Southwoods, doesn't really have anything hyper-local. Um, yeah. Maybe the town, if we develop some sort of budget of how much a very basic version of this could cost, yeah. And maybe it would start off as an annual version and then gradually become biannual, whatever, you know, is scalable. Yeah. Maybe you could ask them the town, would there be funds to pay for part of it? This is how much, you know, that way the town doesn't feel like we're asking for all of it to be paid as nice right. as that would be. And maybe we could then find other sources or fundraise. Yeah. Or else we sell ads. Or you could sell ads too, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, make money for the for the commission. Host has it disabled for sharing screen, so I can't share it. Uh, oh, okay. Is there a way to Cindy has to allow it? Cindy, is there a way that say could... yeah, I just switched they should be able to do it now? Yeah. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. So so in terms, of, yeah, and I think. To your point, Marissa, I think I think uh, biannual would be great, like a spring and a fall, right. you know. Um, so, I also did actually add a little bit more to the list that I was thinking of too. And there's just so many topics that we can cover, so we have yeah. plenty of of options here. And uh, just put this over here. Yeah. And tell you. And I'm a big believer in let's start small. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get, one, get one out there. <laughs> and then, um, you know, sort of once you start doing it, it becomes more well, the, the kind of built in. <laughs> I like that. Have uh, as many as we can do this way, people can pick and choose what they actually, you know, like if someone has an interest, at yeah. least they can just nail one off the list or something. Because it's it, there's a lot going on in everyone's lives, so it's really hard to yeah. think of currently. I mean, on the spot, since we just. This is the, but uh, I also have native bees and honeybees on the AG education technology as well, because that's actually a big topic in our world right now. Yeah. Could we use? Uh, are you sharing? Yes. Maybe we could show folks on the the list. The list. Yeah, because I think these topics are great. Okay. We could um, at least get people in the community thinking as well, maybe articles, short blurbs that they want to contribute. Mm -hmm. um, in the, um, the Tennessee magazine, there are several uh, recipes we talked about last yeah. month that seemed pretty good. Of course, I'm saying, well, if we ask people for recipes, are they going to give us you know, their grandmother's recipe for? They could, know, yeah. I see someone on the call who is a master baker <laughs> and a farmer. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I actually thought of, when I was talking to Bert, I thought of maybe also um, pulling possibly uh, the students, getting the students involved, and maybe have a little school uh, group for actually doing some of these articles as well and getting the school involved. And this way you're also giving them a little experience for uh, art writing articles and also getting them engaged with our topics. They have tons of time to research, so we don't have to just do all our articles ourselves. We can see if we outsource a little bit to the schools. I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> AKA Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping he was going to be here today. I know. <laughs> um,
Yeah, so do you want to do something on honeybees or native bees? Um, it's either either the native bees and honeybees or the possums. I was going to, either one of those is what I was thinking of doing. Okay. What, and what about possums and opossums? Well, they're they're great for uh, reducing our tick population and stuff like this. And uh, ah. they're, they're actually natural just to, uh, to protect your gardens because they get rid of all the grubs and all that other stuff, you know, the things that you don't want in your garden. So they're actually very vital. And hmm. people keep on running them over like the plague. So it's like... Uh, yeah. I kind of hope people will stop doing that. <laughs> I hate ticks. They we had a, uh, during the winter, while we were feeding the birds, we had a pet opossum that came to eat the birds eat. Aww, oh, nice. We named him Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> so that means you got him a hat at one point, right? <laughs> Bought it. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, I think, um, and how about defend the flock, uh, Sage? What, what? That is actually uh, was actually in your Tennessee article there, and uh, basically USDA has a program for uh, the, your uh, poultry. So if you're actually raising hens or chickens, uh, get, you know, starting out and stuff, they te they basically go over things about how to take care of them properly and make sure they uh, have the correct food, make right. sure their health stays up there, and um, just make sure your livestock just you know, grows and develops and doesn't just all of a sudden you got a plague or a disease spreading around your your live animals and livestock. Ah, okay. So it, it's just a, it's kind of an awareness thing for them. And uh, yeah. because they already have an article, but it was so informative, I was like, we should kind of own because we do have a lot of people who are going to start doing that if they haven't already. And a lot of people go into that blind because even I want to start raising them. And I didn't realize, I didn't think about the disease factor and mm -hmm. health factors of, of how easy it is for that. Biosecurity is really big. Yeah. That's true, yeah. So. Oh, is that Diane? Yeah, she has her hand up too. <laughs> oh. Diane, do you have another uh, comment? Yeah, I was just saying biosecurity is really big in poultry. Um, and the other thing, I, I was just thinking of recipes today. Funny you should say that. And um, there should probably be something about the bylaws on how many chickens you can have per acre so people aren't surprised and then have to get rid of all their chickens. Great um, point, yeah. yeah. Or cattle or horses or, you know, livestock. Yeah, Okay. I belong to a bunch of poultry groups and everybody's always asking in what town can I have? How many chickens can I have? It's a big question. Mm -hmm. Diane, for the record, you are. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Diane Gale, Five Point Grove Road. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> I was going to be there in person, but I'm, I got full of goose poop just before I was leaving. <laughs> Maybe you can be the person who writes about geese. <laughs> there you go. Contributing editor, sure. Yeah, yeah there you go. Absolutely. Well, maybe we'll yeah. put you with some sort of poultry related item. Yeah. That'd be okay. Yeah. I'll do some other stuff on other sort of legal, like 61A and right to farm, because I'm thinking about that stuff anyway. Um, I don't know, Ron, if you're, I don't know if you're a writer, do you feel like you can put together an article for us? Can we be edited? There's a yeah, section more. of right. forestry. You, yeah, you're the forestry one, um, expert. Yes, so. yeah, how about your forestry experience? Okay. There you go. I can give you some kind of like bullet points to. Yeah, maybe yeah. about invasives. Ooh, perfect oh, perfect invasives. For you. Yeah, that's an idea. You can even talk about what? your experience. Invasives? Invasives in your forestry. What you use, I mean, it's all in that booklet, but if you wrote a little short article just explaining so that people understood that you had invasives, you got the grant, they took them out, like that would be a great article to read because someone would probably. I need it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the other topic I was also going to throw in there because I didn't put it on the list yet, but open farm day, depending on time of this article, maybe if the first one comes out afterwards or just afterwards, we can put farm day as the centerfold 
this way we're pitching it right off the bat with pictures mm-hmm. and saying what we did and how how it went and because I know that that's one of the things we kind of want to try and launch for our town. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't see this happening before yeah. <laughs> September yeah. 11th. But, right. Maybe uh, it could be mm-hmm. like a fall release then after mm-hmm. that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of what I could help write about. I mean, I could do something. I mean, I, I guess I could research USDA grants. I do know MDAR. Um, I don't know if this is relevant for right now, but I have been reading a lot about soil just for the purposes of landscape work, which is my purview. So I feel like there's a lot of intersection there and there's a lot of new science coming out about soil and soil um, revitalization and soil re- reparation for farmers and you know how it relates to us landscapers. I mean, there's a lot of cross pollination there, no pun intended. So <laughs> I think that's um, always relevant no matter what. It has a lot to do with forestry too. Yeah, no yeah. So forestry. soil is they're asking. Absolutely. FYI. Right. Um, I'm sorry, what? They, they want to rejuvenate. Oh, no? mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sabrina Pooler just took a workshop on, uh, I, think, I think it was called Sustainable Farming, and it was all about soil rejuvenation. So, just FYI. Oh, Melanie, Sabrina, that writes something. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, Sabrina, and maybe we could, um, through the Facebook page, as a means to revitalize that as well and get it more engaged put a call out to people to suggest articles and say, we're looking for writers and you can even put a limit on it, say a thousand words max or 500 words max so that people yeah. don't feel intimidated if they want to write a long editorial <laughs> yeah. piece. That's cool too. But sometimes when you give people like, Hey, we're just looking for short little articles. Yeah. yeah right. um, it's a little bit more inviting, at least for the inaugural issue. So you know, yeah, I feel like you know, term paper. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants like homework, you know, it's like you get to the part with the soils. Not yet, not oh, yeah, yet. That's, that's all in there. Yeah, that's what I'm I have to. Oh, okay. It's going to be my resource, my article. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing too, is even with the school systems and getting the kids involved, we also talk to the teachers and try and see if, hey, maybe they'll do a class assignment and have them work in teams and maybe come up with articles as yeah. well. And then maybe they can write some of these articles. And, yeah. yeah. You know, another thing that I'm thinking is that we have a lot of people in the community who love doing photography. I wonder if each edition we could have people submit uh, their photos yeah. of ag-related stuff. You know, some people do photos just on their phone, but they're really nice. Other people are, I know Jason Jaguar is doing yeah, a lot with right. drones. Other people are kind of, you know, semi-professional and have nice cameras. Maybe we could ask for photo submissions as well so that people can... And I'll even, I can even tag them right on the picture saying this was taken by, you know, sure. the company or... Well, we definitely should do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah get, you know, <clears throat> give them credit. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, Could you ID uh, yourself, please? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, number one, one, two, eight, South Miller Street. Yeah. Also, Thank you. maybe about chickens. <laughs> Uh, maybe you can visit some of the a uh, couple of the places in town that raise chickens, and maybe you can interview the owners uh, for some tips on you know how to raise chickens. Mm-hmm. Maybe even some pictures of the small farm mm-hmm. chicken coop, oh, yeah. whatever, and put it in your uh, yeah. magazine. You know? It would be a uh, local, very, very, very local. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice um, idea yeah. to interview people locally too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotta, gotta get the gotta get the town involved, right? Any way we can. You know, we could talk a little bit about this <clears throat> USDA Defend the Flock mm-hmm. program, and then here's so and so who raises chickens, and uh, you know, what's that like? You know, Fine you know, on the scale, for instance. <laughs> 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 Some photos of her babies and you know her practices. <laughs> yeah. We're start a revolution. Everyone's gonna start having their own. Yeah. <laughs> well, the road is out of business. <laughs> so, what do we think about uh, Garden's Edge as a title? I think that's awesome. Yeah. I did research it. No one has the title right now. Excellent. <laughs> And I'll put it right back up there just to remind people that are watching in if it, if it shows it. 
Oh, okay. there it is. Up. Great start. I think that's uh, awesome, Sage. You. Yes. Yeah, thank you all. Yeah. So that initiative and that vision is is amazing. So thank you for sharing that. I'm just trying to get us to get us out there. It, the graphic <laughs> design's on point too. I mean, it's all yeah. about communication and drawing people in. So well done. I think that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Oh, and just a comment. How does everyone like our logo? I was gonna say I like the logo. Yeah. That's I, lovely. I just, yeah, I think it's, I don't think we need to say provided by your dedicated, I think you just could say a Southway. Southway Agricultural Commission. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I mean, we are dedicated. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was trying give to, us a little credit. I, I, yeah, I was trying to give it the credit that we're going to do. I think it's actually a little quaint. Like, it's kind of nice to say something yeah. like, okay. Well, I feel like it shows our commitment. And mm -hmm. hopefully, if everybody in the community contributes something, it, I don't know. I feel okay. like it's quite nice. I feel like South Lake is missing a little bit. It doesn't have to be those exact words, but I find so I thought the idea was really good. I, when I saw that, I was like, oh, <laughs> like what a sweet okay. gesture from our town. Like, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, now back to old business. Oh, Cindy saying she wouldn't mind writing an article as well since. Um, she oh, goes to school for agriculture. Of course. Oh, yes. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> Cindy, is there any topic? You said any topic would be fine, but is there anything that you're particularly interested in or passionate about? Um, any of them are pretty good. I've done quite a bit of different things with different classes, so I'm pretty comfortable writing on and researching different things. Whatever you guys need, I can do. What did you just do for your, your finals that we were talking about or your, your school projects? Anything? Um, it was my, I took uh, global food systems and um, farm management and marketing. I had to make a farm plan, which I did. I got a 94 on it. So it was pretty good. That's a good topic. Yeah. Farm plan. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> um, That's a really good topic. All right. Well, if you had fun with it, I would say let's go with that. Okay. Yeah. What would that fall under? That would be. Um... I mean, I could give you my whole final if you wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? You know, you know, like, uh... It'll be the next centerpiece. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. 20, 20 to 50 pages long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we can, you know, uh, some of the folks who are not here, like Dan, uh, he's been talking with Lucas Karen about a school group. And, yeah. uh, let's see, maybe we'll... All right, very good. Uh, for the master plan um, update, uh, we met last week. Forgive the editorial comment, but we spent another almost two hours wordsmithing the survey, <laughs> uh, which now <laughs> is actually done. Um, the survey is going to be conducted uh, from late June to August 31st is going to be the, uh, the deadline. And yeah, if you haven't seen this brochure, please, please take one. <laughs> uh, here, oh. Dave McWilliams has done a pretty good job of putting these several places around town. Uh, down here, they're downstairs here, they're at the library, um, senior center, I think, and, you know, several places around town. So that's... Yeah, I think they told me earlier, he just distributed some more at uh, the Barber Shop, Angelo, Shabelli, Daily Grind, Kettle Bread, Valvoline, Summer House. He's Whoa, firing the everywhere. town, yeah. which is the idea, you know, you want to kind of capture everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, it's going to be basically an online um, survey, but there will be a paper version, and that's what the committee is going to be working on at the next meeting next week. Um, there will be a townwide mailing of a uh, kind of a large scale postcard to tell people, okay, this is coming. You know, please participate in the survey. Marissa is uh, developing that for the committee, and there will be um, you know some listening sessions also known as focus groups, and maybe some survey filling out events, like go a certain time, certain place, go to the library and fill out your survey and maybe get a, you know, some kind of incentive, you know, 
prize or something. Uh, you helped your community. Good for you. Final, finally settled on in terms of the online survey, uh, about 30 minutes, which folks tend to think seems long, but uh, you know. Oh, we knocked, we knocked a couple of those off. So yeah, we, we did. did a little less oh, yes, yeah, so we, yeah, we we're kind of joking about it. So, it's, okay, so we're wow, it's not an hour left. now. <laughs> Thank heavens. Um, so, so that's that. I, you know, and at the next if I don't say this, you know, I said the next impact meeting, I wonder if other commissions are doing this, telling their people what's going on, you know, with the master plan, or, you know, I hope so, but who knows? So I want to ask folks. Yeah, that. that would be good because it is made up of a lot of different commissions right. as well as, yeah, residents. So that yeah. would be a great question. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what else here. Just to go back very quick yep. on the magazine, we can also ask the uh, conservation committee if they want to write anything as well. Yeah, that yeah. definitely is we're intertwined with each other, so yeah, we can. They're our sibling commission, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the right to farm not under our you know our open space plan and our activities will continue to work on the right to farm um, flyer. This is the latest and greatest on this so today. Uh, one of the versions we had said. Uh, Could we um, bring that up online, or is it not? Oh, maybe we don't have it, right? Uh, I don't have the latest one, but I think I might have one. I think I can send you the latest one right now. Yeah, if you, if you that we can. We had had a little colloquialism about, you know, if, if somebody's eating bacon, somebody's smelling a pig. Uh, but Marissa checked with Diane. You know, are there any pig farms in town? And there really are apparently not. <laughs> so, no. Maybe not enough to. So, point, you know. went to a, Marissa included a different saying manure is like money. If you don't spread it around, nothing grows. So, I think that sounds fine. I also contacted the uh, Oh, the Amherst AgCom to ask them their method of distribution for their oh, right, right to farm flyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I left them a voicemail and an email and I have yet to hear from them. So hopefully uh, they'll get back to us and we'll be able to at least know how to imagine certain ways or yeah. speculate on certain ways of spending this mm -hmm. uh, because you know, I'm just curious to know how they got it around. How, can I ask how you heard about it? From Amherst? From Amherst, yeah. yeah I just checked their website. Uh, Send us age. Uh, um, okay. I was wondering if you had maybe come across it in yeah. some place in Amherst, but it wasn't in a public place. You found it online. Right, right. It'll be good to make sure it's online for us too, mm -hmm, then, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. We did uh, right point in the continuum here. We had had a lot of a lot of words, so we cut cut quite a bit down here. So this is, seems much more manageable in terms of readability. It's okay, Marissa. Um. Yeah, I think the word count is fine. I just feel like the design um, can be tinkered with a little bit, especially the heading part. Like okay. farming has been a part of Southwix and maybe we'll wait for Sage to get it up so that it's a... I'm about that. Okay, no problem. Oh, good. No, no. It's fine if it just sent it to me. Hoping it would move to cyberspace really. Actually, she did. I just used the photo from my phone. Oh, okay. All right. Because I still haven't gotten a message. So, this part here, 
isn't necessarily the, the bylaw information. Um, so I felt like this was almost like a header. So design wise, I feel like it should kind of stand out a little differently, maybe different text in a text box or with some color. Mm -hmm. This is going to be color printed, I presume, right? Hopefully to, oh, yes. to get people's attention. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we I have to, right? I was assuming so. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, with a photo of a nice uh, haying tractor there. So yeah, I just felt like this part might be, it just could be a little bit more um, attention calling and less text, you know, just a block of text here, text yeah. there, you know, if, if we want people to read it, I think it can be finessed. And Sage, I know you have a graphic design background. So if you have any ideas, um, let me know and I'm happy to tinker around. Or if you want the file as well, that's okay. I mean, I think we're pretty set on the text, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're okay yeah. with yeah, it. It's yeah, just... It's readable. Um, Maybe I can make a little text box so I can put it against the blue, a green background with light text just so that it stands out. I mean, I can do a few different iterations. Um, I just feel like it just needs something. I don't know what the, what, else, what the other folks think, public and commissioners, because you know the more opinions we get on this, the better, right. the more it'll actually be read, hopefully. I mean, how is, is this, this is presented as it is going to be on just a single uh, flyer page and stuff like this, right? right? This is what our outcome is, what we're trying to do. So it's it's really got to be just pure getting to the point and readable. I mean, it's, it's hard to make something like this flashy because then you don't kind of distract. You want them to stay yeah. focused. So I mean. And, and, and partly it, it is a disclosure. Yeah. Um, so you can't get too. So. Right. <clears throat> right. Yeah, and I feel like I wouldn't touch any of the right to buy, uh, right to farm bylaw stuff. I mean, I think that should just be clear text, light background. Yeah. But I just felt maybe our header. Maybe I can do something in this top part. Maybe move around the photo and just make it a little bit more. I mean, I'll see if I can figure something out as well. I'll just throw you something if I do come up with something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just sometimes, you know, with graphic design, it's the littlest yeah. thing that can just make all the difference and mm -hmm. make it something that someone reads or something that someone <laughs> throws out. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard when you have an eight by 10 and you really feel it, so it's... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm so happy that you made that so small <laughs> because before you had all the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, that, that was just kind of going to be overwhelming for people. So, well, I suppose we could take one more tech crack at the text. You know, every word we take out is a you know, space for your right. eyes. Uh, I do like that you included the very practical uh, implementations of right to farm because that's what we hear from people. You know, that's people getting mm -hmm. flipped off on their tractors, mm -hmm. being yelled at, you know, getting harassed about odors or sounds. I mean, those are the kinds of things that I feel like if people understand, oh, okay, if I get stuck behind a tractor, I can't go to town hall and complain about it or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. be disrespectful to farmers. And those are kind of like the real implications of this law. Makes me wonder why they moved to a country you know, the country that is a farming community. Well, that's it. And I, you know, that's why I'm curious to see how Amherst distributes this. If this is something that their town clerk maybe distributes when people buy their house, or is this distributed on an annual basis with one of the tax bills just to remind people? I mean, I'm sure yeah. there's plenty of people in town that don't know that we're right to farm mm -hmm. and have been here maybe 10 years. <laughs> the one thing we can also do is because uh, we're trying to put together a magazine, I think maybe we should make another version specifically for the magazine and give you an extra page. Oh, like explain what Right to Farm is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we'll keep it in every edition so that it's always reminded. Really drill it down. Like yeah. you live in a Right to Farm community. <laughs> we should be proud of it. So we should just Yeah, it. yeah. No, I think there's a lot of education to go. I mean, I'm still surprised when I hear some people say some things about our farming activities in town and you know they, they're people who appreciate the farms but don't understand that there's this whole other component to <laughs> actually getting your fruit your veg your products grown um you know and the way of where we're headed in society and everything we're going to be really relying on those um local farmers <laughs> if we want to keep our prices down mm. yeah 
Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, one of the whole idea is to promote our local farm to yeah. make them part of a strong local economy as well. You know, it's not yeah. just a quaint thing. It's a real economic force. Um, it keeps the town going. These people are paying taxes as well in our town and, um, you know, they're providing a service on top of that that sustains the community. So there's a lot that people, I think, could understand about what it means to be in this sort of town. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a good idea, maybe in an article. Yeah, and hopefully Amherst will get back and then we'll understand. I mean, maybe are there other communities that you know of that have distributed something like this? Um, I don't know specifically off the top of my head. Yeah. Know, a lot of communities are right to farm yeah. communities. So uh, right. we can check, check some others. Um, my family member who was just in town from England the other day, um, they have a big lambing farm, 500 acres in Northern England. And we were talking about this and they don't call it right to farm per se in, in her community, but it's the same premise, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and they've really kind of had to hammer the point home because like a lot of other places, there's been a lot of people moving to the town who aren't used to it, coming from the city, especially with the pandemic mm. development. And um, she was saying that they've distributed, you know, really nice flyers as well. And they went, um, I mean, it's a much smaller town than South Lake, so they did it uh, through mailers, which are obviously going to be a little more cost prohibitive for us. But she knows that another town um, distributed it with their tax bills. With their council tax <laughs> okay so they um <laughs> yeah. did that every year and that came out much more affordable to do mm -hmm. and she said it's been pretty effective because people have to look at it they think it's another tax bill and so they like are like what is this so <laughs> no <laughs> you know so. <laughs> i also uh, might have a contact in uh, georgia so i will reach out and see if they have anything like this yeah, you never know where the next good idea is going to come from. And we take a little piece, a little corner of the master plan mailer and say, hey, we're in a right to farm community. <laughs> no, I'm going to Why not? <laughs> you never know. It could be somewhere in the master plan eventually, right? Get all this, all this space right here. <laughs> right. Put a sticker, right? <laughs> hey, this, this is cool. Look at that. Yeah, just put that logo there. I thought about putting it there, actually. Um, you know, I would. Then I thought, you know, like for the middle photo of this brochure, but then I said, people won't know what it is because we haven't explained it yet. So, well, well we're getting that's there. They should come to our meetings. <laughs> but I think including it in the magazine as well. Um, yeah. It's, it's in our control. Why not? Yeah. Okay. And not to continue to put you on the spot, Marisa, but how's that farm brochure? Um, they're that... coming in on Monday, actually. Oh, yes. Sorry. So <laughs> it took some time to print, um, but they're coming in. I actually have, um, I actually bought some brochure holders so that when we distribute them to people, which I presume would be local farms, um, mm -hmm. they'd at least have the brochure holders already provided. So okay. I have a receipt for that and then the receipt from... Um, the actual printing. And then Southwoods did provide some consulting services on the layout. So I have also an unpaid, like just um, yeah. purchase order from them. So I guess I would submit those to Cindy. Is that right? Or should I submit them to someone else? I think, Cindy, I think it's you now, right? No, <laughs> you should send it to you, right? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. And there's a reimbursement form, right? Where I have to actually staple the receipts um, to. I think I have a copy of that, but. Yeah, for the PO, yeah, I'll just need the, the receipt. And then when they send it back to me, I have to send them a copy of what you made. Um, okay, I mean, would that just be a copy of the brochure? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Like, it, yeah, you can just make a copy of it over the copy machine or give me a physical copy of it. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Very uh, good. I actually went up to, to um, because it was done online, I went for the quantity of a thousand instead of seven, uh, 750. Because I figured if we're going to do the open farm day, yeah. and the cost was just about the same. So right. that's still within our budget, but I figured 
you know, might as well bulk print now versus having mm. to go through this again in another right. couple of months if, if right. we do open farm day and whatnot. Definitely. So. Okay. Okay. I'm excited to see that in the, in the flash. It's finally going to happen. I know. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> it's a new day. <laughs> uh, the, the 72 Mort Biden Road, uh, our Pinellas property, it was has continued to be some back and forth on whether there's anything we can do there. Um, it turns out um, the buyer, the whole thing was handled incorrectly, I think, as we've discussed. It's really the seller's job to clear the 61A lien off the property. Um, the seller is supposed to submit the right of first refusal documents to the town. In this case, it was the buyer. Uh, so it's it was a mess, but there's and the, the buyer now is going to keep it in 61A through 2023 apparently. So there's not really much we can we can do according to the town council. Um, when they if and when they do take it on 61A, there may be some things we could do at that point. Um, but what I am going to do is put together a, a letter, I guess, to folks in town hall and say, these are the steps in the process. They should have never accepted the right to first refusal from the buyer, <laughs> right? Uh, Maybe helpful, that's something, that's all the work Dennis has done in the past. To okay. try. So a lot of the work may already be done there um, okay, in terms awesome. of basic stuff, but. Yeah. That should be a, at least a starting point. I know yeah. you're quite the wordsmith, so you'll be able to put something really good for 2022. Yeah, but um, of course, the bad news is I'm looking at the date on this, and it's 2015. So we'll try again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, thank you for this. I didn't, of course. Yeah, that's good. Let's see the. I think the entire. I think. We need a sort of a culture or a mindset of agriculture and agricultural preservation and land conservation in town home, which we don't have. You know, so I think not yet. I want to get back to yeah, work. <laughs> <laughs> so I think every person in this building should get the right to farm flyer. Every person in the building should get the farm brochure. Study it. Yeah, we'll have a test. <laughs> Not to make language, but, um, and I don't want to, you know, like blame people or anything. Not scolding, but just here's here's the way it's supposed to go, you know. And uh, you know, we'll keep working on it. Fight for your town if you want to keep it. That's right. And also uphold the state laws that are in place that offer these programs, these really great programs that we had our workshop about just a couple of weeks ago right. that are there. I'll never forget when we tried to proselytize, evangelize the APR program a couple of years ago, Bert, and we were too late. You know, um, the folks that were selling this land wanted to sell it that summer. And they said, you know, where were you? Because for the past five, 10 years, we would go to town hall and we'd pay our taxes and we'd ask what programs are there for conservation? And they said that every year, you know, that they asked, mm -hmm. they would be told there's nothing. We don't know of anything mm -hmm. when there's just so many options, you know, and even, you know, some sort of guidance to our commission would have been, you know, helpful. They could have come to a meeting. They could have been told sure. that there's an ad comma. Sure. Um, so I'll never forget that. And I think <laughs> that was kind of a lesson for us as yeah. well to make sure that Everyone's informed, right? I mean, yeah. Well, that's one thing I'm trying to change with Facebook too, is I'm trying to make it so that people realize we exist. I'm trying to get the name out there now. And I, I even tried a sad attempt at last second to tell people the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Diane was actually working on that too. And I was like, oh, maybe I should put, you know, start pitching into this. <laughs> so I'm going to start working on graphics to okay. make it an actual advertisement. Hey, come to our meetings, you might actually learn something that might help you or benefit you. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. Yeah. yeah, so we'll post all of our meetings always in anticipation on our Facebook page. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that complements what 
other pages do online. Yeah, Safe South that does that. So yeah. that's very helpful. I know people will tell me, oh, uh, you know, I heard about this meeting or I watched the recording later because when I logged on, it came up on my feed. So it's a good reminder. It's a public service. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Uh, she's left. <laughs> Maybe we should, you know, from time to time promote these posts. I mean, it costs ten dollars or something, but right. I mean, uh, yeah, it's like ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, to I mean, you got a lot more people. I, yeah, but the only, the only problem with the promoting it on Facebook is it doesn't like it won't stay with our town. It'll go everywhere. Yeah. So their yeah. Pro, their idea of promotion doesn't actually work for the little town that wants to just you know <laughs> inform the little town. It's going to just go everywhere else. <laughs> Sage, when you're posting the agendas or, or our meeting announcements online, are you cross posting them um, on any of the forums for yeah, people I'm, that aren't following I'm, ad I'm, I'm hitting, page, the ad page? Okay. Yes. Oh, that's and great. I'm, and I'm also going to. I'm trying to figure out a couple of ways to make it so that people actually start realizing that, you know, like I said, our, our page, but I'm actually, I think I have to go to like, I, I think the school has their own board meeting. I want to attend one of these and see if I can actually have them start posting to their teachers to tell the kids and everything. Hey, mm -hmm. uh, we have an agricultural commission that is actually looking out for your future. So maybe you guys should start mm -hmm. also trying to get involved with this and, you know, start logging on and, and actually watch our meetings because obviously we don't we're not gonna have a thousand kids in here but they can still zoom it and maybe we'll at least build our zoom numbers you know because kids talk to their parents especially when they're interested so if yeah. we can't get the adults we'll get the kids to get the adults <laughs> i like yeah. that yeah okay good uh community garden we're about half rented uh there's 14 rented and four 13 available um, I will post the update today. Yeah, Sage has been very helpful with that. We posted a map of the garden and what's available where. Oh, I can actually show that. Oh. <laughs> While we talk about it. Sure. <laughs> um, continue to need work on the fences and the gates. You know, as you know, <laughs> one of those gates are practically falling down. So, we still, we still got some falling. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think Dan said he had some more of those metal uh, stakes, oh, yeah. whatever. Um, That's no big deal. Yeah. So, yeah, so some of the fence posts need to be braced, but I think the gates, the actual gates, need to be rebuilt. So, uh, yeah. but all's going well. Uh, the pump is working. <laughs> if everything goes to plan next spring i might be able to build new gates oh i just uh, unfortunately i i had to change jobs and now i'm gonna be traveling 50 percent, and then i'll be home 50 percent. so i have to get my shop in order and as soon as my shop's in order i have a bunch of oak and I'm make it all in the oak so it'll last for a few years instead of just a year <laughs> <laughs> okay so that, that is a goal of mine make new gates <laughs> Are you going to make the posts? Uh, do both the posts and doors. Hmm. The oak? Yep. Ooh. Expensive stuff. And I got it off for free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a salvager. Okay. And I work for manufacturing, so they throw it out all the time. <laughs> awesome. So, wow. Yeah. I got a stockpile. Let's see. Uh, since Tammy's not here and Dan are not here, is not here, we won't have anything on the um, Association of Agricultural Commissions or the youth members of this commission. Um, I do have one note on that though. At the master plan meeting last week, um, the school representative, Patrick Jubb, said the schools have a relationship with, oh, thank you, Sage. There's our garden. Oh, that's uh, great. Yeah. That looks good. <laughs> Just about so half then, okay. And yeah. there's, there's actually more spots taken up now. This is before the extras added in. How did you get this photo? This is a great photo. Um, actually, uh, Jason... Jaguar? Uh, Jaguar, uh, there you go. Yeah, Jason Jaguar took a couple aerials and then I pieced the aerial together. And then I uh, actually artistically added in the grass because this was actually a fall, uh, 
it was a very early spring shot. So there was no green. I had to make the green. I didn't think it looked like that. Yeah. <laughs> it looks a little different now. I plowed it all over. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Right. Oh, wow. It was some oh. fun. Oh, Doug Moglin's on. Hey, hey Doug. Hello, just, just noticed you there. Um, hey, Doug. Let's see. So anyway, so at the master plan meeting, uh, Patrick Jupp mentioned that the schools do have a relationship with uh, Smith uh, Vocational School. And Smith Vocational has agricultural programs. Oh, yeah. um, oh. Agricultural mechanics, animal science, and horticulture and forestry. So as part of this whole process, check that out you know, in terms of... Uh, you know, youth here. The interesting thing that Smith Vocational has done as well is that they've also taken a lot of the land in Northampton and they actually keep it as active agricultural fields so that their students can actually practice. Uh -huh. um, so it's quite nice in that they have uh, a walk extending from Smith College. So if you cut through Smith College um, and their sports fields, it turns into this nice river walk, um, which a lot oh, of people yeah. frequent. Yeah. And if you go long enough in that walk, you start to see signs for the fields and they're saying they're okay. active agricultural fields and they're part of Smith Volk. Um, so I thought that was great in that there's hands-on experience from the school, but you're also preserving farmland for the purposes of kind of teaching yeah. the next generation. It looks really nice by that walk, kind of creates a whole separate environment within Northampton yeah. to um, oh, preserve some that. land. So it was a really interesting concept and hmm. something to it think about to it have. down the line. Uh -huh. um, there's a lot of utility in that, in that, you know. Yeah, And you can add school programs to that too, if we actually attain that. Right, right. So it was very cool to see that. <clears throat> um, separate from Smith Vogue, but uh, there's a community garden in, in Northampton with, I believe it's 600 plots. <laughs> yeah. at, at the same size as ours or bigger? Uh, they might be a little, they might be more like 10 by 10, but you know. Still. A lot of them. 600. <laughs> yeah. Is it full? I'm not sure. I think it's pretty popular. Pretty yeah. So what you're saying is we need to talk to them and ask them how their marketing is going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What they're doing to make it work. Of course, they do have how many thousand people compared to what we have. Right? Scale, it's, right? it's, it's not the scale, it's how you pitch it. Like you get every single person in this town wanting one of those plots and we can expand. Right. <laughs> so um, open farm day. Sage, I sent an email a couple of days ago that had that list in it. I don't know if you can call that up. I think, yeah, maybe Cindy might have gotten it too, right? It's these are you logged on? Uh, Sage? Yeah, here's um, okay. Let's see. Just our initial ideas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I just found it. I got it. There's a single page. Yeah. I hate this bar that's on top. There we go. I guess you did this. Oh. It stopped sharing for some reason. Oh. Oh, I'm saying it's not a pullback button. There. Okay. There we go. Maybe you could zoom in just a tiny bit, see? Yes. On the bottom, right? Well, I, I just go to view it. Review it. Yeah. And I'll just scroll as we go. Okay. Yeah. So, if you can read it. 
So these were just my initial ideas, just to kind of get us going, um, based on some conversations we've had about all this over the, uh, when we used to have the tractor rally, and when we didn't have it, and then, you know, now we want to make it better. I mean, there's a, this would be a lot of work to put this all together. Um, so, it's going to take more than four of us <laughs> yeah. to, to do this. So uh, we'll see. I'll just run through the list and we can, you know, see what we think. I think uh, we said um, Sunday, September 11th would be the, the good day. I believe Juanita said that. Yes, she did. Yeah. Because she does want to get, the closer you get to Columbus, I guess Columbus Day is huge yeah. for the farmers. So uh, the closer you get to that. Um, the busier they get. So um, stick with that day. And that um, also works as well. Sorry, Bert, because yeah. um, Aunt, uh, not Ann Harris, Granby is holding their open farm day the next weekend, actually. Oh, it is? Yes. Oh. So I actually reached out to them just to kind of let them know we were thinking of this day and to, um, you know, kind of thank them for the inspiration yeah. in the first place okay. and to also let them know, you know, we could promote their event it would be nice you know on sure. our event to be able to say hey if you liked this head down to Granby next weekend yeah, um, yeah. okay uh and we talked about you know some churches but I was kind of driving around town and I, I think a public place would be more appropriate I'm hoping we can use the school campus um, if, if not maybe town hall um but just someplace that's visible and someplace that's public property Mm. Um, and I did reach out to uh, the superintendent, Jennifer Willard. Um, she hasn't gotten back to me, but then again, graduation was Saturday night, so she's probably had some other things on her mind, <laughs> so I'll give her a call tomorrow. Um, I'm thinking we'll create a map of the farms that are in the farm brochure. Um, we've talked about a couple of these ideas, uh, create a, uh, you know, a passport, so people go around to the various farms and get a stamp or a sticker or, or something. Maybe have some prizes for people who see all the farms. And that's part of the work. It will be okay. What do we use for prizes? <laughs> um, <laughs> and maybe we have a we had a we used to have a raffle at the at the tractor rally. Um, that's right. So yeah. we really that. get certificates from local businesses and stuff. Yeah. 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 Well. Technically, uh, being the open farm day and everything, why not we see if we can just make some small purchases from each farm, make a basket, put it all in the basket, oh. and now everyone's going for that for prize. We have a secondary and third, and we're now we're supporting the farms that are actually participating and giving a message, and also they get to experience our local farms okay. all in one basket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, uh, Billy sees honey in one basket mm -hmm. and some. Goodies from Boston Makers, maybe some yeah. produce. Well, maybe a basket for each farm. Some calories. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that would be cool. Each farm, yeah. yeah. They could put together a basket and okay. prize within a prize. Yeah. And we got to talk to the farms anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like an incentive. If you want to participate, we're going to talk some stuff. <laughs> See, I'm hoping that the farms that participate will be there'll be some kind of programming, <clears throat> you know, tours or demonstrations. I think of you know Lenita's container garden workshop that she's she's done. You know, not just opportunities to buy stuff, you know, uh, hay rides, pony rides, you know, whatever, depending on what type of farm it is. But when it comes to guides, especially for the farms and stuff, I'm wondering if maybe it would be nice to try and see if we can enlist a teacher who's used to guiding students. They can just guide oh. the group, but they'll, they'll kind of, you know, they have that way of, they're just so used to it. They kind of know where to set the focus. They just got to talk to the farmer, right? We could say, how would you like us to do this? And then make sure it happens. A farm okay. docent. <laughs> yeah, this way the farmer doesn't have to actually, you know, break all their time away in concentration. Yeah. They can still focus on what they got to do. And you have the one controller control in the group. Yeah, that's, I was going to say to this point here, when I saw this bullet point, um, 
we, we've been talking about this for some time, right? This open mm -hmm. farm day throughout mm -hmm. the years pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, kind of going to farmers and asking them what their thoughts were a couple of years ago on this. Yeah. And an overwhelming response I got was, I'd love to participate, you know, but, and, and people can come visit. You can obviously drive business here, but it's a busy time of year still, you know, uh, there's also liability <clears throat> questions in terms of tours. And, you know, sometimes people, I've, there have been a few farms in town where there, there have been issues where people kind of keep walking past greenhouses and get into fields, get where there's, you know, get into yeah. areas where there's machinery mm -hmm. and whatnot. So I think we need to be very mindful of that and maybe say just a suggestion of having a set person who can kind of manage that and be mindful of the people would, you know, or doing the tour would kind of take the onus and liability off of the farmers, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, the idea is to get right. them to hopefully participate and feel that there isn't any more work being put on them or liability put on them. So mm -hmm. um, keeping that in yeah. mind too. Good point. Definitely have to investigate that. I would think that a farm that's open to the public, let's say Blossoming Acres, would have liability covered but you know um, yeah i mean even now mm -hmm. the, the farmers tell me all the time they have people kind of just walking into the back and they're like i don't have anything here for you this isn't a public area and they're like oh i'm looking to see if you have more of this flower or this i mean i think people <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. when it's a public space sometimes i think we should just yeah. be mindful and not get the farmers um right. in trouble in any way you know yeah yeah, we don't want to irritate the farmers. Irritate or, or, or put an onus on them necessarily that they have to come up with programming too. It's a busy time mm -hmm. of year. So maybe that's where some... You need the shepherd for the sheep. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the farmer, if they want to do the tour, great. But if not, would they feel comfortable? Ask them, would you feel comfortable having someone who doesn't farm your land come in and also yeah, kind of facility. help for that day? You know, some people might be a little... <laughs> mm -hmm. They want to make sure their farm is being rep represented accurately because yeah. it is their business ultimately. Too, oh, yeah. You know, so it's all advertisement. Yeah. Right. So right. make sure that we have some cohesion yeah. on that front. Excellent. Excellent. And, point. If you, and if for some odd reason the farmers or the farmer that is uncomfortable to the to full extent, maybe we can at least get a, a stand or a brochure or something. We'll figure it out so they're still represented, but you don't have like, you know, right. thousand people trespassing yeah. our law. What Granby does is that they have a volunteer from their AGCOM and from their land trust because their land trust and AGCOM work so closely mm -hmm. together and they co-sponsor this farm day in Granby is that they do have spaces um, like a tiny table at every farm or, or ag business that's participating. And I've been to it every year and some businesses don't do anything extra, but they'll have that little table there with the person from the land trust or AGCOM just to stamp it. Mm -hmm. maybe a bowl of some stuff you know treats or something and that's it and you know if it's a place of business that's open that's fine you can have people come in and buy like they usually would but there isn't any additional programming so we can also maybe let farmers know that if you know they don't want any extra activity would they consider having a small table there mm -hmm. manned or personed <laughs> by somebody yeah. um you know kind of out of the way but just there to stamp and you yeah. know, that way everyone can feel like they can be part of it without having to commit to a whole shebang. Just leave it open yeah. for people, you know, give them yeah. the option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so, you know, I thought about, you know, food trucks. Food trucks are very popular these days. Um, if you try some of the Southwick restaurants first, like Delicious and um, yeah. Brewery has a barbecue truck, I think. I'm not, I don't know. And uh, but not just not just Southwick businesses because yeah no yeah. people know those <laughs> it's just like Enfield Enfield uh, they get like food trucks from all over the place for their uh, pirates and then so I mean we we got to kind of see if we can reach out or branch out on that I heard of one the other day <clears throat> actually they have it at the Westfield Farmers Market Vlad's fired pizza <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I, think I, heard I think I heard that. <laughs> And I think we have, and tell me about your experience, but um, like one truck per type of food. So one person with hamburgers and hot dogs, yeah. one person with ice cream. They're not like yeah. 50 ice cream vendors. Hot dogs. And, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah. The first programming in the cuisine area, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dave McWilliams from Conservation has already volunteered to do the dog treat truck. Oh. <laughs> his, his daughter apparently has a, <clears throat> a little 
side business that she's trying to develop um, for like just cool. dog and horse treats. Oh, you so, yeah. to cover some farmers <laughs> too, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, I wish offer, you know, bottled water. And I was thinking, oh, beer tent, that's always fun, but you know what? Pain, that would be in a setback. Yeah, we'd have to get a license. Too, yeah. Yeah. In terms of, you know, Maybe you can send yeah. people to the brewery and yeah, say, power, right. yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea. Uh, I know some of the breweries, I'm not sure all, but some of them are, have agricultural licenses. Uh, so it'd be a, oh, yeah. kind of a natural fit. You know, yeah, so. yeah, no, I mean, beer does eventually or, you know, does yeah. have its origin in farms. <laughs> so you get, get the connection. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see. And then I think you had said, Sage, <clears throat> have other, you know, if you're not a participating farm, but maybe you want to participate somehow, have information booths or tables from other, you know, farm family insurance, uh, MDAR, 4-H, I don't know, maybe even crafter or something. I don't want to make it to be too big yeah. either. You know, maybe we should keep it strictly farming. And not overwhelm people. Right. I know that at the past tractor rallies, we have always had um, 4-H, you know, Randy's always tables. Yeah. The, the booth there with his kids. And then yep. Eric Mason has always also done the uh, Farm Family Insurance booth too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, mm -hmm. just based on their past participation, it might still be nice to ask them because we know they have the infrastructure sure. to kind of set up for that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, that would get me... Uh, Possibly information also to put an article for our four local four H's. Yeah. Okay. That is part of one of the articles I was hoping yeah. to get on that list. Yeah. Because not a lot of people know. I mean, I didn't even know. I have two kids and I definitely want to put them in four H eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Sage, I think we're already looking at two issues here. I know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's growing. Look at that success. <laughs> And then I was thinking about kids, you know, stuff for kids, face painting and that kind of thing. But then again, maybe we just keep it to fine. Yeah, you know. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a similar approach to, to what you were saying about the magazine. You can just start off small. I mean, we yeah. haven't done the tractor rally in three years, three so years. we're a little rusty. This yeah. would be a very different iteration of that. Yeah. Um, why don't we start off? A scalable, yeah, right, <laughs> approachable right, exactly. way. Yeah, yeah. Through all of those whistles there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna learn a lot from from this from this version of it. This also gives an eye opener for initial costs and what we may have to think about later implementing wise, and uh, also like procedures and how we handle it if we're shuttling, if we're if everyone's just driving to a parking lot and then walking to the first destination or whatever. So it's just, oh. it gives us a big eye opener about how everything's getting handled by doing this the first time. Well, the shuttle, that's a thought in terms of possibly people, senior citizens or others with mobility issues, maybe they don't wanna be driving all over the countryside. <laughs> and we could have a little bus go, maybe the senior citizen van, you know, or- yeah. you know. Does this uh, senior citizen center in town have a, Dedicated transportation yeah, service? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So. Um, Interesting. Okay, well, maybe we could look into what logistics yeah. and costs of operating yeah. that for maybe half a day would be. <coughs> yeah. You know, we don't want to have to maybe yeah. do it for the whole period, but some. Yeah, and the villages, so, you know, AKA American Inn. Yeah. Oh, they have a van. <laughs> so. Yeah. They probably have more than one van. Sadly, this year, we're going to have to watch the gas, though. We have to do what? Watch the gas. Yeah. We're going to be fronting that gas bill. So. <laughs> right, right. No, I mean, in the time of the driver, yeah. obviously, you know, yeah. gas. Yeah. Well, the driver, I think we can we can figure that one out. I'm sure someone can volunteer. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to worry about paying a driver. Be surprised. I mean, you know, if it's a town hall vehicle, who knows? I don't know. But that maybe those are the logistical. Yeah. Things that we need to research. Yeah. But again, you know, I would caution that we stay within a certain scale so as to not overwhelm ourselves. Yes. As nice as it would be to have some intergenerational right. involvement and participation. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. 
for now we'll just strap our in-laws to the hood and drag them along. <laughs> just <for a> ride, <laughs> <right? Yeah. laughs> we'll see some farms. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Great. Well, good ideas, everyone. Thank you. Historic yeah. tractors, that's very easy to do. Yeah. We have a whole you, list you know of people. Person, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a few folks um, from past uh, yeah. tractor rallies that have actually reached out quite a bit <laughs> every year to see if we're doing one because I think oh, it's there. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah I think our mm -hmm. tractor rally was like an oath of sorts you know an opportunity mm -hmm. to be appreciated. I know? actually missed the last one. They had yeah. I didn't know it existed I found out after it was done I was like come on. We <laughs> had participation from people in town but then there were people in the last couple of years that were starting to come in from other communities so I thought that was kind of cool and you know, yeah, that yeah. we had kind of <laughs> the starts of a following, you know, of yeah. you know, people who well, knew that Southwick had this historic tractor event, vintage yeah. tractors. I think that's cool. Well, the thing with communities too is if you get other communities to start going into the other communities, you actually start to ask questions and start to ask for help and, you know, from aides to, uh, would you like to support us in this function and that function? You guys start to work together and you actually start to build a kind of like a little mini society. So, I mean, the more you get intermingling going on, the bigger our possibilities, the bigger we can do things, you know, events. And so it's awesome when they start, you know, yeah. willingly coming to events. I love seeing that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the whole idea behind this open farm bit was to try to promote the agricultural economy in town and grow it. Yeah. So if you also get people from other communities coming in and hopefully patronizing <laughs> these farms, that's that's a plus. And maybe other businesses as well in South Lake if they're yeah. coming into town, you know. So it's another way to support our system with with friendly open eyes. And yeah, yeah, I'm all well, for it. Come to South Lake. <laughs> Come on down. Yeah. I forgot what put stay I was in, but there's a oh wait, no, no, it was um I was in Pennsylvania and they had a, a kind of a farmer's market, a lot of trade uh, trade makers, people doing all types of furniture that they're working on and all this stuff, but they had like 600 freaking tents. And it was not just, you know, it was not just Pennsylvania. I think other states were actually also there because they had not, not just the Amish community, but they just had tourists and a whole bunch of people, but they all got together with all their crafting and stuff like that. And they were just selling to each other and, Something. It was this big event, and I never saw one advertisement. I think it's just something they <laughs> annually do, and people just come. Word of mouth. Yeah. yeah. It was, I couldn't find a flyer on it at all. I, like, I, just, I just saw this mass thing happening, and I didn't even try to look it up, and I couldn't find it anywhere, media, paper, or anything. It was just a massive amount of people just you know, trading and buying and just supporting <laughs> each other. I'm like, mm -hmm. I wish we had some town. <laughs> you bring up a good point, though, in that, you know, a lot of our farms in town are kind of a multiplicity in themselves. You know, you have Blossoming Acres, which has its, you know, produce business, but then it also has the bakery. You have Coward Farms, which has, obviously, you know, nursery items, but then they also offer furniture, um, yeah. you know, made by, yeah. I think, Amish folks over in Pennsylvania. So it kind of goes yeah. in with that farm economy as well. Yeah. So, you know, I think it would be great to kind of see where this goes and where people, where the dice fall with this first inaugural event and then kind of see from there yeah. if the next year we can hone in on some aspects of those businesses and mm -hmm. maybe uh, make those the focus yeah. points for the next uh, additions, who knows? And, and if we take notes during this farm day on all the farms that we actually come to, we can also start to break down like what they did right, what they did that could have been worked on, make a list, mm -hmm. and then we can actually present for the next year to each farm. Hey, this this kind of information was very, very useful. It was very informative. Can you do a, a little more thorough uh, on your thing for the presentation and you'll probably get your message out even better this time around and we can also on our part make a, an actual flyer for the next farm day that states like a little history of each farm and stuff like that and you know everything that we learn through this experience I think that's brilliant, yeah. okay well now how about music you know um we've had we've had bands at the tractor rallies before 
I don't feel like anybody pays any attention to me. <laughs> I think yeah. they're good ambiance. Yeah. 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 Um, that being said, this is a long period of time, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. in this place, be it at the town center or at a, yeah. one of the schools, I wonder how often, you know, how many people would actually be there for a given period of time? Yeah. Are they going to maybe go? Yeah. Shorter. That's what you're thinking. In terms of the central event, like uh, an event, the, the event on public property, you mean? Well, I'm. I'm because that's where the music would probably be, that's right? Where you're, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. That's what you're suggesting. Is it too long? Well, I don't uh, think uh, it's too long. I'm sure vendors will kind of come and go, you know, yeah, when they when yeah. they want. I'm just wondering if, because this is kind of a mixed model, you know, whereas our tractor rally was in one set place, everything was there, was very centralized. Right. This is kind of decentralized, and yeah. that we're also asking people to go to farms and push them there. I wonder if music. Although it would be nice to have music. I get it. Mm, you know. Okay. Yeah, for uh, food trucks and stuff, you know. Yeah, it's festive. You know. Yeah, and it's yeah. a great time of year still. I just wonder, budget-wise, you know, I know yeah. we have to pay a band, too. <laughs> right. I think, well, like, Dennis has a band, or he he knew whoever the band was that came in before last, you know, he, he was the one who brought them. I think it was um, Brett Mitchell who brought them. I think oh, they were his you know friends. What? You're right about that. And he got a very reasonable price yeah. from them, but... um. Dennis is a musician and performs with other Southwick residents. I wonder if they'd be yeah. willing to do a set, maybe. Do they either time? Yeah, maybe one set. You know, you don't have to do several. It's a long day, but yeah. maybe a midday set. Well, we can, we kind can of see like the options. art show. We can get see if we can get a couple that are willing to volunteer. That's way they Open can meet each other. <laughs> <laughs> Karaoke then. Oh boy. Oh, let's go for big. Into, yeah. Hey, well, we get, is... we're gonna send them to the beer later. Uh, yeah, to the, one of the distilleries or whatever. So, you know, it's open mic night with beer. Come on, the game of rock. <laughs> yeah. The breweries might be saying, "Who sent you here? <laughs> Southwick AdCon? <laughs> New promotion. Come on." Oh boy. I mean, I would say let, let's think about the music because it's certainly a nice spot, but I think yeah. there's several other components in terms of programming and getting farms to participate, yes, but I guess program and hopefully work with us. That might be priorities for mm -hmm. vendors and mm -hmm. we manage to get music or add that in there, or get volunteers mm -hmm. who maybe want to perform a set. I think yeah. that would be mm -hmm. great, but... Worst not a priority. Case, worst case scenario, we have a little speaker with uh, Spotify on non copyrighted music just playing in the background, <laughs> nature sounds, and you know, bring the forest to them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. okay. This is good. Good start. Okay. <laughs> We have to rewatch the video of this later just to figure out how much. Crap yeah, there's I said. a lot of uh... <laughs> what you said you were going to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't yeah. want to I don't want to interrupt, but Doug has had his hand up for a little bit. I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Doug. <laughs> no worries. I was entertained by the discussion. Very awesome. My yeah. I just and I apologize I missed the public comments, but um, I would urge you to consider the date of 9-11 in the perspective of this event. I know there's a, always a significant event at the firehouse that day to commemorate the events of that day. Um, oh usually God. in the morning, then it usually is over by 11-ish. But just put that in perspective with the event that you're planning and the environment. Yeah, good. You know, I've, very good point. I, yeah, very good point. I've yeah, thought of that. Just... I'm just in you know in terms of the kind of the sense of that day is that when we want to have a celebration mm. my oh, point okay. my point was yeah. i mean the, the tractor rally was is always a great event and i i think it would be you know if the 10th i don't know if that's a reason you can't have it on the saturday or and I, I heard there was some other dates around there that with columbus day and granby having there is the pre you know yeah. the next or the following but just food for thought yeah thank you um doug i think 
something. We I think discussed. Lanita was the one who said Sunday is better than Saturday. But... She does a market on Saturdays. Okay. That's why. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then the previous, I guess, weekend is Labor Day weekend, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Let's look in, before we let's look into the tenth. Yeah. And in terms of the, you know, getting some volunteer tour guides and kind of helping the farm set up the programming, maybe Saturday would, would be doable. You know? Yeah. Um, and Granby's is actually on a Saturday. So theirs okay. is on the 17th. It's always been on a Saturday. So, um, and yeah, I think a Saturday is actually more convenient because then I Sunday you get to relax and, yeah. and before you go back to the busy work life or whatever. Right. I mean, obviously farmers don't get breaks, but some of us aren't <laughs> farmers. <so. laughs> we can do breaks. Lenita took a, a, a week off in November, I think, last year. So that, this is the only time I really yeah. have. Yeah. <laughs> I could take off. Yeah. <laughs> and it, have you put any thought into using Wally Park for this event as a location or town hall? I mean, town hall is nice for the auditorium, but you now have the pavilion with power and water and bathrooms and the playground and... Uh -huh. It's a, okay. and, and if you had your tractor rally, there's a place to stage for that if it ended there. Yep. Well, that I don't know if there's any other events on September 10th. I don't know when is Rugged Maniac or any of that. It's around there, but I don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man. No, that's there. I mean, uh, the Nationals and Rugged Maniac are the, uh, you know, the Super Bowl events for parking and stuff at Wally Park. So I wouldn't you. It wouldn't be available that day, but right. Uh, trying to check well, with what sounds like. Right now. Is there somebody in town hall, Doug, who's sort of in charge of that, and you know the calendar or whatever? Um, oh, absolutely, Cara Cartella, Cartello, okay. sorry, or um, uh, Cindy. Oh, okay. And the uh, rugged maniac is the twenty fourth, twenty fifth in Southwick for Rugged okay. Maniac. So you've got breathing room there. So I don't know of anything that's going on the 10th of September off the top of my head. Okay. But, but it, you know, I, and I'm sure they would uh, work with you on, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a pavilion rental or whatever, but I'm sure they would work with you on that since it's town, one town commission to another. But um, it's a great it's a great venue for an event, and I think even given the population of that would come out for it, you've got parking, you've got a place, you've got shelter if it rains. You know they've had some really cool events at Wally Park that draw a lot of people, and you know it, it leverages the pavilion. The kids are on the playground. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. So you could check with them to see if the the dates available for the pavilion that day. Definitely. Thank then, you so much for that, Doug. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Because the band needs power too, usually. Right. So I, mean, I think a couple of years ago they had it. Well, maybe it was more than a couple now. Three, four, five. They had it, the tractor rally started at like either IBS or DPW and came down all the way to the center and then pulled in at Town Hall and then it was the back of Town Hall and Thrifty Park. Uh -huh. But now you've got the electricity and bathrooms and everything at, at Wally Park. It might even be a better venue because now you have the parking lot for the for the tractors and everything else right down below it. Yep. You don't need to sell past the close. I just think it's a good location. Yep. Mm -hmm. Keyword bathrooms. That's a good point. I had right. thought Believe, that. yeah. Um, yeah, people are going around the farms that day and, you know, they're not really going yeah. to have. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like there's public bathrooms. Yeah, and if they're with their family right. and children, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. a priority. <laughs> okay, excellent. So, are we gonna, you know, pending um, availability, go with Saturday the tenth? Yeah, I think yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize that was not. <laughs> it's not that wrong. <laughs> Actually, okay. I had to kept on remembering it way too strongly every time I remember that date because my uh, grandma's birthday. Oh, oh wow. yeah, I felt bad for her. Yeah. Okay, I think we're um, 
in good shape here. One thing I want to mention is our next regular meeting would be uh, Wednesday, July 13th. Uh, I'm going to be away that week. You guys can certainly meet. I'm, I'm going to be away that week too, too, but I will be on Zoom. Okay. So I will technically be here, but I won't be here. <laughs> that makes sense, right? Zoom enables us to be yes. in two places at once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll see my name, my wife's name up there somewhere. I mean, maybe we should check in. I mean, that's you know, maybe maybe worth moving just because it is kind of the dog days of summer. So <laughs> yeah. if you're going to be away, there may be other people who. Yeah, I'll check away. with um, uh, the other members. Uh, then we can always make up for it and have two the next following month. Yeah. Yeah. And we definitely need to keep meeting if we're going to have this learn. Oh, that's oh good. yeah. 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 So. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Okay. So, with that, should we have a motion to adjourn? Um, Brian, Brian seconds. Um, we'll call vote for Hanson. Aye. Aye. Ron, yeah. Marisa. Aye. And Sage. Aye. And there'll be nobody, no voting members on Zoom. So, okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs>